we've looked at a few ways to create services, a few types of services. We have values, constants, and uh, factories. Uh, there is another advanced API called the provider, which I'm not going to be covering in this course because for 99% of your usages, you're not going to be using providers. You're going to be using these three constructs. Uh, what actually happens behind the scenes is all these three constructs, the value, constant, and the factory, actually end up calling the provider. Provider is more low level provides much more fine-grained control. But again, for the 99% of usage, you're not going to be needing that control. So for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to cover that in this course. There is, however, one other implementation, one other uh, type of service that you can implement, and I'm going to cover that in this course. To be honest, you don't really need that as well. With these services, the value, the constant, and the factory, you're more or less covered for a lot of the things that you need to do. However, there is another convenience API that lets you do things a little bit easily. So let me talk about what the typical use case for something like a service is. Most of the times, what you would have is like a factory, which has a name and it has a function. This function usually ends up preparing an object. All right, so you have this initialization of an empty object, you populate it with whatever you need for your business, and then you return that object, right? So this is the typical use case. You would create factories, uh, which are basically uh, functions that return objects. Now, JavaScript has a standard construct for preparing objects like these, and these are called constructors. I hope you're familiar with what JavaScript constructors are. If you're new to it, I definitely recommend you look at the lessons and the objects and prototypes course on Java Brains. I cover constructors in a lot of detail. But constructors basically are JavaScript functions which are written for the sole purpose of constructing objects. They are kind of similar to constructors in other languages, but not exactly. They're basically functions with the sole purpose of returning an object and constructing an object. So considering that all, most of the uh, factory functions are going to be returning an object that you're going to need, is there a better way to construct this object rather than you writing the function to do it? Well, you can have a constructor function instead, right? Rather than have it be a simple function where you construct the object by yourself, you can create a constructor function, which is typically meant for constructing objects. Now, let's say I have a constructor function like this, function app config. And this is a function which is called in constructor mode. So what happens when a function is called in constructor mode? The JavaScript engine adds two lines of code, hypothetically, which look like this, for this equals an empty object. And at the end, you have a return this, right? So this is a typical constructor function. When you call a function in constructor mode, JavaScript engine injects these two lines which is kind of similar to this function, right? So here you have an empty object created and then you return it after populating. So the JavaScript engine is kind of doing it for you automatically when you call this function in constructor mode. So what you need to do is just do the exact same thing you're doing over here, but instead work on the app operator this rather than value. So if I were to do this dot for all these things, I'm populating the this object then the JavaScript engine is going to return the this object at the end of the function, right? The way to call a function in constructor mode is to say new and then the function name, okay? This is how you call a function in constructor mode. Now, since these kind of functions, these constructor functions are built for constructing objects, and since the app service, you know, all the different services that usually deal with objects, well, is there a way to call a function in constructor mode in order to initialize a service? Well, it turns out there is, and that is by a new type of service called the service service. I know, the name of the service type is service. Yes, I've had to teach this to a bunch of people. I understand how painful this is, but that's the name they've given it. So the way to create this last type of service that we're going to be covering is to say app dot service, and I'm going to call this app data service service. You typically don't want to give this name. You don't want to have two services in the name. I'm just doing this to distinguish from 
the factory service over here. Typically, if you're using this approach, you just say app data SVC or something like that. Now here, what I do is I pass in the function, just like I pass in a function for the factory, right? But the very fact of me using the service API means that Angular is not gonna just execute this function and put in the return type like it does for the factory. It executes this function in constructor mode in the case of a service. So what's gonna happen when it does calls this function in constructor mode? These two lines are gonna get added and we're gonna get an object back that is constructed and that's what's gonna get assigned to this, right? So this is pretty much the same as this function over here, right? Angular is gonna call the function in both cases both in the factory and in the service. The second argument is a function and Angular calls the function and gets the return type and assigns it to these things. What's different is the way in which it calls these functions. In the case of a factory, it just does a simple execution. So this would be something like this, Angular doing this. Okay, open close. However, in the case of a service, what Angular does is not a simple function execution, it executes this function in constructor mode. So it would be something like this, new app config. So when you're building a service, you need to write a function that's meant to be executed in constructor mode, which means it assumes these two lines, the initialization of this to an empty object and a return of this. So your function is basically just putting in values to the object. So all you're doing is essentially saving two lines of code when compared to the factory. But well, that's, that's what you do with a with a service. Now let me make sure this works as well. So I'm going to initialize this to the in the header, and I'm going to set the service service dot name just to make sure this still works. So I refresh the page. Well, it didn't work. So let's see what's going on. I'm going to open the console, and the error is that the app name service is not defined, and this is the problem. I have this constructor function which needs to take the app name service as an argument. I'm not passing in that argument using dependency injection, but I'm using it directly. So all I need to do to fix it is to pass this as an argument. And again, like with the factory, Angular is going to dependency inject that service into my constructor function when the, uh, when the object is being created. And that's going to make this available. So this is service uh, API in a nutshell. It's just another way to create objects, but using the constructor pattern in JavaScript. So now that you have two powerful ways of creating these objects, one is with factory and one is with service, what are the criteria that lets you choose which one to use in a particular situation? When do you use a factory versus a service? I'll talk more about that in the next video.